What's up, everyone? Welcome. We have moved the simulation recording studio. We are still in the beautiful Silicon Valley, California. But rather than being right in the heat of downtown San Francisco, we are now in the beautiful San Mateo, over near 280, by the Crystal Springs Reservoir. I just walked around it today. It's gorgeous. Much more calm and spiritual out here. Also, we are now without Ron Vargas, who was the producer and director of the show for those first 500 or so episodes. And we are now working together with this man right here, whose name is Ori Shapira. Hi, Ori. Hey, I like it when you say it with your voice there. <laughs> Ori <laughs> Shapira. For those that have watched the episodes with Ori, we did the episode with him when he was explaining what holding space was. And then we did another episode with him where he held space for me on the show. And we had a really nice transformation in consciousness that occurred. A nice evolution for me occurred there. And Ori is not only coming on board to do things like produce the show and switch between cameras and whatnot and add really good ideas and also add his take from behind the set as we talk on the show. But also, we are now holding space with all of the guests that come on the show. It's now an included part of the show experience. Yes. And it's beautiful because even while we do the co-creating of the outline with the guest, we're mentioning to them as we're saying, this is the intro, this is what we have in your bio, this is what we're going to talk about, do you have any thoughts about this? And we tell them at the very end afterward, after we ask you a couple last questions, that we're going to hold space with you. We're just going to be together and that we're going to evolve consciousness together that way. And it's great because it's like a massive pendulum swing from the interview energetically to just being afterward. And Ori joins us and leads the holding space session afterward. And we've now been experimenting with that for a dozen or more shows and it's been a lot of fun. We've had people that have st stuck around and just sat with us and had really deep emotional transformation, spiritual transformations. It's been quite nice. And Ori's been teaching me a lot as well about just a myriad of critical things that I need to learn about human connection and about silence and about how deep we can get into the psyche and about the importance of what holding space and having a really strong container can actually do. And probably one of the coolest things was, was that in this grand massive experience of being alive together on this rock orbiting the star, this creation experiment that we're all a part of, that we're all trying to make some sort of meaningful impact in. We typically think that the faster that I talk and the more that I say I can compress and that the other person can learn much more that way. But we're so socialized to just talk our asses off all the time that we forget that actually really powerful transformations can sometimes occur 
even more powerful transformations can occur from not socializing and instead from just slowing down and just being together. And by doing that, you can unlock really cool things. And Ori and I will be showcasing that more and more with the evolution of the show over time. Ori, let's hear from you about this transition. Well, I just feel right now like a kid in a candy store with new toys. <laughs> because this studio environment and creating things that may garner a lot of eyeballs, I'm still coming into that. And it's exhilarating and a little scary. But I've never felt more aligned. I also feel like a kid with new toys. It's great that Ron was able to help teach a lot of the technical knowledge that we need to be able to operate the TriCaster and the robotic cameras and just to get a multi-camera shoot flowing. And I also feel like I have a bunch of new toys with what Ori's been teaching me. And so it'll be cool when it's more evident for people to identify that Alan is now approaching things a little bit differently. I think it was even on a recent show that we did that someone had mentioned something that was a little bit deeper about emotion or spirit. And I was very welcoming for them to take a pause and to unpack that more about their life. And I also feel like your your drive to be aligned right now with this endeavor and with the way that we could leverage the equipment and what's been formulating in our essences to, to really showcase profound transformations in consciousness it's excellent. It's excellent. And I'm just pumped to be able to leverage the equipment for that. Well, there must be
There's even a whole, <laughs> there's even a whole thing called dead air that radio used to talk about all the time and video talks about now. This idea of dead air. Like it's basically a sin to have long periods of time without saying anything. And like that paradigm is so being changed right now by Ori and by so many others that are just like, screw that. I'm just going to just be, I'm going to be with people and just be like, we can, you know, like Ori taking time to see what came up for him to say next. We actually had a decent amount of that on the on our show with Holding Space too, where that was happening. Maybe an interesting idea to actually hold space right now. I'd love to. Let's do it. Okay. All right, cool. Um, yeah, let's see if I just turn here. If I still, if I look at you like this, how do I look on there? Turn a little bit more towards the camera. Okay. That's better. Okay. Yeah. You can see your face more that way. Okay. I can also use the mixed effects shot where we showcase all of the cameras at the same time. Um, we can do that at another time, or I could go do that right now. Why don't we give this a shot? Let's see, let's give this a shot. Sounds good. All right. Hey, Alan. Yeah. What do you think you're doing? Sharing your beloved show. with this man. Hmm. 
It feels like God is channeling through and the wind has moved in this direction and it feels more aligned with the divine calling of the North Star that is within this blueprint, within this spirit meeting with this body for this artistic expression that our nodes collide for this portion. It's like a chapter in the book. But people don't know about me and they don't know about the stuff I do. They know about you and that's proven. The most important thing is that what content ends up being created from our interplays as well as the interplays of when guests come on the show for interviews as well as holding space, as long as the content there that is being created is exciting and inspirational, and educational, then the right work is being done. And that's what matters. This updated team at simulation, what are we a recipe for? For full-fledged spiritual evolution and for not only the, the interviewees that come in for them to have more deep spiritual evolution, but also for the guests to be able to feel like they come even more so from their hearts, that they express themselves even better than before. And then for the audience too, for them to feel like, whoa, there's an even more spiritual transformation that's happening. Even better content is being made now. And there's another component, which is this holding space component that's happening on camera as well. And it'll depend on if the guests will choose to bring that part on camera or not. And we're excited for the ones that do so we can share that. Is a viral viewership in the cards? Of course. A tree of possibilities. 
all exists. All exists. harder and smarter work. One can achieve those North Star goals more effectively. And a definition of what a viral viewership is is also very important because I prefer to have a couple people that have their consciousness transformed that go off and get inspired and go and talk to more people about the subject or go and transform even more people's consciousness or go and build things related to the field that were discussed. I'd rather have that than have so many more people that are just watching and then don't get transformed and don't do anything afterward. So it's more actually about the transmissive property of the awakening than it is about just a count of people. You talk so much about spirituality and words like that and your show is full of powerful minds in tech, business, entrepreneurship, and more. So How dare you do that? Yeah, as many of the audience may know as well as as much as I know from about a year and a half ago or so, approaching now two years ago, that the intent of asking very thought-provoking questions to different leaders in their fields was about that transmissive property of awakening to other people. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do about wealth inequality? What are we going to do about the democratization of exponential technologies. How are we going to handle these things? And bringing on the different leading scientists, entrepreneurs, artists, spiritual leaders, people in so many different pressing fields in blockchain and crypto and AI and robotics, biotech, neurotech, geopolitics, geoeconomics, emotional intelligence, all these different fields. It was so interesting bringing on the different people and talking to them about what they're building, why it's important, asking them poking questions about ethics. And slowly but surely, it started going more and more in the direction of like, you know, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of the human experiment? Who or what created this? What is source? What is spirituality? How do people feel when they 
tap in to thinking and feeling like that? And how does it affect their, what they're building in those other fields? So that has been such a profound realization recently that if you poke an endeavor into the philosophical, the moral, the spiritual, the religious, the creationary, the evolutionary aspects of what this human experiment is, why we're here, what this person's purpose is, how they connect to a deeper, more transcendent state, those types of questions, if you do that more with the guests, then it actually drives their science and their business and their art and all the other endeavoring that they're doing with their families, their communities, with employees, all that type of stuff much better. Those two things are not separate things. They go hand in hand, science and spirituality, business and spirituality. They go hand in hand, art and spirituality. So actually science, business and art without spirituality is a disaster. And you see it everywhere you look in our civilization. Super disconnected people that are building the future. And that's why there's a lack of philosophers, a lack of moral scientists, a lack of ethicists that are supposed to be working with all of the people that are building AI and that are working in the field of biotech or neurotech. There seems to be a lot of spirituality around blockchain and decentralization, which is great. A lot of spirituality around psychedelics and meditation. And even some with neurotech. But it still seems as though there's people that want to just jam neuroprosthetics into your brain without even taking the time to reflect on their own connection to God, their own connection to source, to what's transcendent of humans. And so then that's the goal. If we can bring more and more of these brilliant minds in Silicon Valley, in Shenzhen, London, Tel Aviv, all these different cities around the world, if we can bring more these powerful minds that are so deeply building the future into a more spiritually communing state as they build, then we have a much higher likelihood of positively affecting the trajectory of our world. And then people at home can also, or where they're tuning from, can also tap more deeply into their spiritual essences as they're also building the future. How can these potentially potentially edgy ideas really touch people? How can people be moved toward the way you're perceiving. Well, first is that it's not just about how I'm perceiving, but also about how so many of the other people like you, like Mama Nui Juan, like so many of these Bentinho, Sadhguru, um, so many of these other leaders in spirituality around the world, how they're perceiving. We just had 
Sandy Hart, Joyous Hart on our show, the way that they're perceiving, why are people perceiving in a way that it pieces together the most question marky areas of what is our purpose here? And when, when we start endeavoring ourselves into those question marky puzzle pieces of what we're doing here, what is our purpose here? That's what brings us the most meaning and fulfillment. So these edgy ideas are actually the most important ideas. If you are the person that continuously asks themselves, what is my role here? You will go so much further in life than those that never ask themselves that question. And same thing if you do it not only to yourself, but then you go and do it to everyone else. If you are that person that is constantly talking to people about what is their role in this human experiment, then they will constantly be thinking also themselves about what is my role. The more people that are constantly thinking that, the more awakened people are. What did I come here to do? What is my role here? Okay, I endeavor a little bit more in this direction. Hmm, that was pretty interesting. I like that. Maybe I should do a little bit more of that in my life. I endeavored in here. Hmm, didn't really feel it so much. Okay, maybe a little bit less of that. Consciously living life. Living life and feeling that I'm connecting more deeply with my purpose in the directions that I go. (sighs) Ori, how do you feel about the integration of spirituality more deeply into the show and what your role is with that and also what it can bring to others both the guests and the viewers I think that it, my role is to be something spiritual. Even I don't know what that will look like. But...
what else is more worthwhile is kind of how I feel. Like, Well, I'll also share that emotionally. Alan? In this moment? feeling uh Alan Yes Um, I'm feeling something that isn't cool. more It's ex um, it, it feels exactly like that. It just feels like right now I'm being the opposite of cool. Like that's just the emotional experience that or belief that is present with my system. What does the opposite of being cool mean? Uncool? Not just that. Um...
Like, not a good fit. Not a good fit for what? Like, this show and whoever I'm imagining is watching it. Why do you feel that way? Because I don't feel entertaining or at speed. Um, like my pace feels unusually slow. And that's part of the change, Lori. The mainstream culture or narrative of everything needs to be densely packed everything needs to be at light speed as fast as possible that is very quickly breaking apart <laughs> that that we spend a dozen years of our lives learning language, but we want to be spiritually enlightened in a one minute video. That's a joke. That we want to compete so hard at being the best economy in the world that we pillage and plunder and enslave and put all our ethics to the side to do so? That's a joke. We know that our, dis our connection to nature and our connection to each other at deeper levels and at slower paces is a massive key 
in unlocking the next evolutions of consciousness. And that what seems to be uncool is actually cool. I don't want to not shine. I don't want to be boring. <sighs> Every moment of our life is shining. And one of the big keys of life is to realize that every moment of life is shining. Even me from a couple years ago, le first learning how to dive deeper into interviewing was, it's funny to look back at now, but that is still shining. It's, it's, it's growth. All I can think about is the eyeballs on the other side of the camera. Beautiful. The care that you have for that is actually exactly what's needed. Right now, when people sit down together, th on camera, mostly people are thinking about how can I become more popular? How can I earn more money? How can I become more famous? That is very quickly being sniffed out by people and they're saying mm -mm, that's not my ethic but when people that go on camera are obsessed with what other people are seeing and they want to care for those people that are watching care for every moment in time that those people are investing into watching what is being shown to them and discussed that's just, that is beautiful to care that deeply and to make sure that what is being communicated is enriching
What if people don't feel called to slow down to this speed when they see us? Out of the distribution of people the totality there are people that are disengaged at this speed and that is fine there are people that even in that group that are like why are they doing that and they become slightly more engaged Then there are the people that are already slightly engaged that are like, why am I seeing stuff like this more often? And then there are the people that are already quite <laughs> engaged in stuff like this. That distribution is very important to keep in mind. And our responsibility is to help make sure that for those that are even a tiny bit engaged all the way up to quite engaged are gaining further enrichment and inspiration.
also at some point it would be interesting to move the TriCaster out of the room that the dialogue is taking place in because the TriCaster is quite loud and during the periods of yeah. silence it would be nice for there to be just silence. Yeah. yeah. I was telling Ori that there are some of the professional studio shows that exist now that use TriCasters have their TriCasters in like our room or two even outside of the room they're doing the studio show in that way that thing's not making any noise in the studio space with your help we can start affording to do stuff like that I have all the links in the bio. We got, we unpacked some interesting points thanks to your questions. Yeah, I feel better. I feel like energetically you kind of held space for me, which, which was nice. We have been doing that for each other quite a bit. With our families too. Which has been very interesting. Yeah. Actually, for those that don't do this yet, like please take your uh, your newly found <laughs> friends trusted spiritual sisters and brothers to your family take them there or have family come to you with them because it's transformative what happens with your relationship with your family members when someone else that is trusted that is already quite consciously evolved and spiritually evolved can partake in the dialogue in a three instead of just a two person dynamic it's super life changing yeah yeah like we're stuck in like like a 25 year relationship with our mom or our dad or whatever person and like you're literally stuck in because you're you know each other's perspectives quite well on a lot of things and you're constantly all trying to you know kind of like nudge each other and all this other type of stuff <laughs> when you add in that that third fresh perspective that's trusted and friendly and wants to help consciously evolve the two it's it's critical it's like it's a it's mission critical to do stuff like that it's also interesting that whenever we like hold space we don't we never know what is gonna happen so we've been holding space with just Ori and I sometimes just three people with one other person and even recently we held space with seven people. That was fire. Oh. And it was all like close people in my life too. And we just had a gorgeous evolution together. Like, literally seven people, zip, and just being together. If you think about it from a perspective of 
information theory in conscious evolution, the idea would be how can you mathematically represent conscious evolution in the shortest amount of time? And the answer lies in holding space. It does not lie in, I'm going to talk to you. Ninety nine point nine percent of our existence when we engage with another person is just talking and talking and talking. And usually we're just waiting for other people to finish what they're saying so that we can say what we want to say. And how much conscious or spiritual evolution is actually occurring then versus the point one percent of the time. And soon to be way more than that once things like this spread. That when you're just there being with each other. And you're tapping deeper into yourself. That tapping deeper into the other. And the relationship between the two or up to the seven or more that are there. And Ori will also be explaining what it's like holding space for large events of 100 plus people. What does it feel like to be in a stadium that's filled with 50,000 people when you're just there and you're just feeling what 50,000 people are feeling? Again, you're not just watching the the event. It sounds like the next evolution of the human race. (laughs) you know what I'm saying bro 100% (laughs) (sighs) (laughs) it's just feeling how like big of a of a load it is to to take on it's huge and it's gorgeous also (laughs) seeing the potential of it (laughs) feeling the potential of it so pumped that already for what tool what Ori is what Ori's helped me add to this tool belt also for what Ori's already helped with the guests that we've had on the show afterward how we're going to be starting to also be recording those and showing those transformations and consciousness after the shows together And I'm pumped to get to that vision where the next evolution of humans is humans that are more sensitive, humans that are more deeply connected to source. I'm so jazzed for that. Yeah. Good, me too. All right, shall we? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We appreciate it. It's been fun updating you with what's going on. It's so nice to be... For those that really want to be sensitive for a moment... Think about the metropolises that a majority of you live in. There are 
thousands if not tens of thousands of other humans that are all in extremely close proximity to you and there are also hundreds if not thousands of cars that are always constantly in proximity driving by you <laughs> there's constantly electromagnetic fields that are all around you all the time the amount of just machines of all different sorts that are there are just constantly bombarding your energetic field now contrast that with how you feel when you're right next to the ocean or how you feel when you're in the middle of the woods contrast those two feelings because one feels like we are literally being scrambled as just worker bees and the other one feels like we're connected to something that is divine that transcends us so now the show the being away from this downtown metropolis and more so in nature in a more conducive location to spiritual evolution and transformation is not only helping me as a host or he as a producer and all of the guests that come on the show it's also going to make it a better experience for you as viewers that get to see that and feel it yeah it's a huge huge thank you to everyone that's continuously been supporting us and continue to support the artists the entrepreneurs the spiritual leaders the organizations around the world that you believe in continue supporting them and helping them grow and keep supporting us our links are in the bio below try and slow down and hold more space with your family your friends co-workers people online do it do it more often that's an interesting one. We'll have to see what we... There's a big difference between holding space in person and trying to hold space over video or... Yeah, well, that can be done too. Um, and also, uh, if you're really curious, um, reach out to me. You know, a Alan is uh, going to be traveling for a few weeks here in August. And so I'll have more time to do that with others. Yeah. Is uh, email cool? Yeah. Cool. Um. Or you can go to www.oriholdingspace.com. There's contact there? Yeah. Oriholdingspace.com and contact Ori. And also our email is simulation series at gmail.com and Ori has access to that email. So he can field inquiries from there as well. And you know that get in touch is in the bio of all of the videos. So you guys can be getting in touch from any of the other episodes. And really do give that a go. Give holding space a go. Let us know your thoughts in the cup. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you on all the cool things you talked about. And ask yourself that question more often. What is my purpose here? What is my purpose here? And ask other people, what is your purpose here? What is your North Star? Get asking that more often. And build that future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace. Yes. Yes.
Yes.